Are you really an entrepreneur if you've never had a failed business? My failed business was because of exploding bottles. Yes, exploding bottles. So here's the story. One of my favorite businesses was my startup winery in 2019. I had this idea to do with wine what seltzers that did to beer. I wanted to provide a flavored alternative to a classic product. This classic product being, of course, wine. So it needed to be classy, it needed to be fun, but it needed to have a variety of flavors, give customers the options to pick and choose. And so we had flavors like strawberry, honey wine, mango, guava, raspberry, dragon fruit. It was sexy and I learned a ton. Here are the four biggest things I took away from my failed business. So the first is I learned you know, consumer packaged goods. I learned about alcohol and drink marketing. Um, I learned how to do Facebook CEO PPC brand marketing. Like from a marketing perspective, it was a crash course in how to be an amazing marketer because you're selling one of the hardest products. The drink market is extremely hard to break into. The alcohol market is extremely hard to break into with no funds. And then the consumer packaging goods, just getting your stuff on the shelves at Target or Walmart is just a nightmare. And so I learned the processes on how to kind of weave my way in through, well, how do you do DTC to customers? How do you sell on Facebook? How do you get SEO to work for stuff? So marketing was an amazing, amazing, amazing masterclass in how to do that through failure after failure after failure. Two is I learned about compliance and the moat that compliance creates. So compliance is wonderful in the sense that it, dri it drives this huge moat because it's very hard for people to keep up with that compliance, including yourself in that business. So most of my time was spent dealing with compliance issues or making sure we're doing this process or this process right. But in the end, it keeps out other competition. So it's a great, it's something great that I personally like in my business. In HVAC, it's something that we we like. There's some sort of moat around one, buying products through um, the factories, but two, also through EPA regulation on refrigerants. Number three is I learned a lot about pricing. Pricing is huge in the alcohol market, right? A wine bottle in the $14 tier is significantly different than the wine bottle in the $12 tier or the $2 tier or the 45. They have ultra premium, premium table. Like there's just all these categories of wine and that's how, going back up to consumer packaging goods, that's how they, they put you in stores and at what price point and how to sell on wholesale versus how are you selling direct to consumer? What, where do your prices need to be and where does the cost of goods sold need to be and your margins need to be to be able to give people wholesaling options. Running this business was a great tool to learn about like cash flow management and all of that. I'm running a business and, and this has permeated through all my businesses is this is the key element to it and it's very hard to understand unless you're actually doing it in real time. Number four and probably one of the most important parts, picking a good partner. Back to exploding bottles. The reason the business shut down was because I picked a, picked a bad partner. And it's my fault, I'm not blaming anyone else, but my partner was an amateur winemaker. And so the way that we got around and saved some money and didn't have to pay experienced winemaker extreme amounts of money to make our small batch product is we, we hired and partnered with a winemaker who was kind of novice. And so what ended up happening is due to the intricacies of fruit wines, like a raspberry dragon fruit, neon purple, beautiful bottle of wine if you don't kill the yeast and you add sugar back into the bottle it creates a champagne and champagne with regular corks after about two to three weeks even in a refrigerated space tends to pop and blow carbonated liquid all over people's escalades and pantries and carpets and places that neon purple liquid shouldn't go so we ended up shutting down the business shortly after that, but that is why the winery failed. It was our fourth batch, but uh, you can't really get around um, exploding bottles. So the four things that helped me with my HVAC business today were consumer packaging goods, marketing, learning alcohol laws, two, understanding compliance modes and how to work with the government, work with the city, work with the state, work with agencies to be able to manage those. Three, how to figure out your net your cash flow, your pricing, and how all that wraps together to run a business properly. And number four, I learned the most valuable lesson that can end your business is don't cheap out on partners. Your partner needs to understand what they're doing, 
who they are, their place, paid well, and they need to be a really good fit for the job that you're expecting them to do. Otherwise, the whole operation explodes. Thanks for listening to my story, guys. If you like what you heard, go ahead and follow us. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments down in the comment section about how I'm a terrible business owner. I love that. Um, but also, if you just want to, to comment on the story, feel free. And reach out to us at ownedandoperated.com. Listen to the podcast and like and subscribe. Thank you all.